Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Good morrow, everyone, and welcome to Real Film Nerds Podcast, episode number 341. I am your host of Dose Hosts, Matt, not snipped, Hinshaw, and uh, with me as always, my good buddy, Mysterious Mike Talent, celebrating an important anniversary today. Mike, how's life? Uh, you know, it's good, man. It's good. It's good. Um, can't complain. Uh, I, I guess, you know, it's starting to become fall, so that's that's fun, right? You know, like technically, I guess fall's coming around the corner, but, uh, you know, all the, the pumpkin beers are hitting, and, uh, you know, it's good. So I am going to drink nothing but Sam Adams Oktoberfest for the Harvest Horror Fest that is around the corner. Are you going to do nothing but drink your pumpkin ales per usual? Um, I'm hoping I can get some more. Uh, I did, just got the first first one. It was is Aldi's pumpkin. It's a uh, pretty good. It's a little sweet though this year. So Mike, to get more and different kinds of beers, you have to go to this place. It's called the store. Yeah, that's where they have the beers. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll, we'll go to the store. We'll find we'll find something. You go out that thing that's, it's at the front of the house. What's it called? It has a handle on it. Door. Yeah, it's door. Called a door. You go out that, and then you get in the thing with the rubbers, and the windows. Yeah, yeah. The the Uber. Vroom vroom. Yes. Yeah. The Uber or the car. You can go either way. It's fine. And then you go and get beers, and you say hi. I'm Mr. Mike Talent. I need another pumpkin ale. No, no, I already had that one. I want this one. So. Yeah, yeah, yep. No, that's what I got to do. So getting in the spirit, Mike, it's kind of in the spirit, but not yet, I guess, maybe half-heartedly. I mean, it is technically a horror movie. Uh, this week we're chatting about an Agatha Christie-inspired film, A Haunting in Venice. Why don't you go ahead and give our fine listeners the breakdown? All right, Matt. So this movie was directed by Kenneth uh, Bragg. Uh, no, Bra- Bra- Brian. Uh, oh, man. I'm screwing it up, Matt. Ken- yeah, dude, it's Kenneth Branna. Branna. Yeah, the G is silent, Sir right? Sir Kenneth Branna. The G is silent? Yeah, Sir Sir Kenneth Branna. Sir? Well, it doesn't say sir. He's, he's knighted? He is knighted. Yes, sir. Oh, nice. Okay. So it's directed by Kenneth Branagh, um, written by uh, Michael Green, and based upon uh, Agatha Christie's Halloween Party. And this movie starring uh, Sir Kenneth... Uh... Oh, man. I'm... Dude, it's been two seconds. Come <laughs> on. You can do it. Branagh. 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 I'm just messing it up, dude. I'm messing it up. I, 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 the You're G throws me off. now. You son of a bitch. You're doing it on purpose. The G throws me off. Uh, Michelle Yao, uh, Jamie Doran, Tina Fey. And in post-World War II Venice, uh, Perio, or per- how do you say his name, dude? Perot. Perot, now retired and living in his own exile reluctantly attends a seance but when one of the guests is murdered is up to the former detective to once again uncover the killer all right mike so i know that was a difficult one for you even though kenneth brand is very well known and michelle yo and jamie dornan and tina fey but it's all good man you got it you made it so uh mike i had never seen murder on the orient express before this film And so guess what I did all leading up to watching A Haunting in Venice on Thursday? And you know I have a copious amount of time. Dude, you you went and watched it? When did you have time for that? I watched A Murder on the Orient Express, and I had to watch it in sections. I watched it in sections throughout multiple days. And then I watched um, A Murder, not A Death on the Nile afterwards. Even though I had already seen Death on the Nile, it had just been many years not many years, because it came out in 2022. I was right after it came out was when I saw it. So about a year and a half ago or so. And I didn't remember a whole lot from it because I wasn't impressed. But anyways, I saw all three Sir Kenneth Branagh's Agatha Christie trilogy, I guess is what you would call it, because they're all the same character and tied together and they're all based on her novels. And I'll just say this right off the bat. 
as we get into our first impressions. I think A Haunting in Venice is his best one of the trilogy. Um, cool, man. I, I, I enjoyed this movie as well. Uh, I think it it was... I don't know. The the haunting stuff was cool, but mostly it was still, you know, uh, a whodunit, as you say. And uh, I liked it. Yeah, uh, it's a fantastic mystery. It has horror elements. It has clearly a lot of drama elements. But out of the three, this one, you know, watching them all in one week really just stands out quite a bit. It's my favorite of the three. Um, I think possibly the runtime is a part of that because it says it's an hour and 43 minutes. Take out the commercial, not the commercials, the um, end credits is probably closer to an hour and a half. So I think the time was perfect. Um, this one didn't leave me uh, bored because I felt like murder on the Nile, not murder on the Nile, death on the Nile. They spend like the first hour of like a two hour plus long movie just kind of doing build up. And it was very, very, very boring to me. In comparison to this one, this one is kind of, you know, it kept me going. It really, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great and I was clearly vested in the main character. It's a different side. He's retired now. He's trying to enjoy his life, but yet he still keeps getting roped in on these mysteries. Yeah, no, it was, it was very, uh, entertaining and, uh, I don't know. I, I guess you're right. The, the pacing of this movie there's not really a dull moment. It's just kind of moving and moving and moving. Like it's pretty, pretty quick. And all, I enjoyed all the people that were trying to always track him down to get him to do something for them. Well, it just shows you how well known he was and how he had to hire a bodyguard to keep people away from him because he was so well known for what he did for so long. Um, it's an interesting premise, not premise, but world. It's in Venice and it's after World War II. The other two take place in the 20s and the 30s. So it's been a good 25-ish years. Um, honestly, Mike, I, I have a hard time talking about this one without spoiling it just because it's a murder mystery and you don't want to spoil a murder mystery. But uh, out of the three, I really think this one is the best. Um, I'll just do this. A Haunting in Venice is my favorite. Number two is A Murder on the Orient Express. Death on the Nile is my least favorite. And it's just mostly because Death on the Nile has a solid hour of just boredom even though that's the one that has Gal Gadot in it and it has Army Hammer and it was supposed to come out long before 2022, but uh, the controversy surrounding Army Hammer is what caused the studios to kind of try and bury it, which is too bad because it's it's still a decent film. I, I'm a huge fan of murder mysteries. I think they're fun. They're interesting. They're good. I, I guess huge fan is not the right term. I enjoy them. I respect them. My buddy that went with me to see A Haunting in Venice, he was bored because he's just not a huge fan of them. And that's what you got to understand is that it's not an action movie. It's not a thriller. It's a drama. And I think it's a very well done one at that. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I enjoyed the um, trying to look at like all these, uh, I don't know, the the logical way of looking at different things uh, that were being presented at, at him. It was, it was really uh, a neat take. On, on different stuff and uh without getting into too much spoilers yeah yeah you're dancing around you're dancing around mike you're doing okay yeah, yeah i'm dancing i'm dancing um so i i think with that matt i i think i'm gonna ask you what are you drinking this fine morning evening or afternoon <sighs> well mike like i said i am going to save my eric talent provided Samuel Adams Oktoberfest until Harvest Horror Fest, which, you know, believe it or not, is right around the corner, Mike. Right around the corner. We're almost there. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. It's it's coming up quick, dude. I'm excited. I'm excited for our first movie. Um Yeah, we talked about it this morning on the radio. You know, I think uh Lisa's really looking forward to it too, which uh for those of you who listen to me on the radio this morning, I apologize. I did not do a very good job. Because uh, my good friend and co-host, not co-host, my good friend and host of the Mile High Show, Matt Santos, was there promoting his comedy show with J.C. Anderson, who also does the comedy show with him. And they kept screwing with me during my interview, and it just threw me off so bad. Anyways, Lee's is really looking forward to it. My mom's looking forward to it. Everybody's looking forward to Harvest Horror Fest, our sixth annual. But to answer your question, Mike, I'm not drinking 
an Oktoberfest by Sam Adams. I'm drinking a Shiner Bock, another quality brew. Oh, nice, dude. I am uh, drinking a uh, hazy uh, double IPA from uh, Sweetwater. You're loving those Sweetwaters, man. You got to get through them. Pumpkins are around the corner. You got to get to work. Yeah, I got to get to work. No more Ippas, all pumpkin. Well, all right, Mike. Speaking of, I don't know. I mean, my sister, I'm trying to figure out how to say pumpkin. Uh, I guess a pet name for a child. Speaking of pumpkins? Yeah. I don't know. Mike, what is this week's just horrible intro into a dad joke? Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, well, you know, why not? I got dad jokes. I don't think they understand, though. Gotta think I'm funny. Other people never laugh, though. Dad jokes. How do you fix a broken pumpkin? Are you serious? That's the joke? Yeah. That's amazing. Dude, how did I line that shit up? <laughs> I have no idea. You a jack-o'-lantern? Oh, that, that, that's actually pretty good. But, uh, no, no, it's with a pumpkin patch. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. The pumpkin patch is much better than jacking a lantern. But, <laughs> hey, you know, I honestly, I have no idea how that got related. Maybe because we were talking about pumpkins like the whole fucking time. I don't know. Hey, you know, it worked, Matt. It worked. Speaking about something that doesn't work at all, Mike, how does <laughs> a haunting in Venice relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? <laughs> All right, Matt. So, uh, Sir Kenneth uh, Bran, Ben, Branna, Branna, yeah. Sir Kenneth Branna is uh, he. He was also in um, Avengers: Infinity War as a uh, as Guardian. Uh, uh, was it as Guardian Distress? As Guardian Distress. <clears throat> anyway. Yes, he was he was in uh, Avengers: Infinity War. Okay, all right. I don't know what Asgardian distress is, but clearly not a main character. Yeah, not not, not a main character. Asgardian distress call. He was the voice. Oh, and he was uncredited. I'm seeing it now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. That's cool. That's the main character, though. Yeah. And director. Yeah, yeah. And director. So, anyway, that, you know, continues on, Matt. I think the Marvel Cinematic Universe has gotten so huge, it's pretty much got everybody in it. I mean, there's only a few people that I feel like we haven't found in it that we'd expect. Like, still waiting on Denzel. I don't know. There's just, there's not very many people left. Yeah, well, I mean, Mike, it might get too easy for you, and we might have to switch it to something else. Maybe the Fast and Furious universe. Oh, yeah, that would be much harder. <laughs> we might have to do some some Kevin Bacon seven degrees there. Yeah, I don't know, man. That might be a bit much for you, and I'm not a huge fan of the Fast and Furious franchise, but it's another one that has a shit ton of films. It does, but I don't think it has the breadth of uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and, like... They film some movies in England. They film like they film all over the place. Like it's it's got a lot of lot of uh, different people working, you know, because they're you know doing multiple movies in parallel. So, well, and you know, not to say anything. I mean, we've touched on it in the past, but they're really kind of hit and miss lately. You know, a lot of the MCU has just not been doing very good, and you know, we got one of those coming up in uh, November, unless they push it back even farther. You know, it was supposed to be Captain Marvel 2, and now it's The Marvels, so we'll see how that goes. But anyways, we're not here to talk about that, Mike. We're here to talk about a haunting in Venice. Uh, we are now in the spoiler section, so if you don't want this murder mystery spoiled, which I highly, highly suggest you don't, uh, go ahead and click us off. But if not, uh, continue on, and here we go. Mike, ready, set, uh, spoil. Oh, okay. Um, the butler did it. No, um... <laughs> No, no, sir. That's Clue. Uh, yeah, I know. I was just, I was just kidding. Which man. we did talk about that today. Huh? Um, any, anyway, uh, no, I, I really enjoyed, which I was dancing around before, was 
the um, looking at the various things that are presented to him and finding all the holes in in uh, the uh, I guess seance and and various different things that are like happening at this uh, at this chateau. I don't know what what what, what do you call. Palazza, I believe, is what it is. Palazza, yes, that's what it was. Like there was a name. I knew there was a fancy name that I didn't know. Palazza, um, and it's like he, he just shot down like everything that happened. Although there was like I think there's one scene, one or two scenes where it's like maybe something happened, but he's not sure. And I like that. I thought that was cool too. So it was like, he shot down most of the stuff, but I, I don't know. I really like that analytical look of everything. And it was like, you can't fool me. Do you know who I am? I'm Perot. So I would like to add on to your uh, thought. And uh, I'm going to try and do this and not make it too spoilery, but probably will. Um What I really liked is how he's trying to disprove the medium which is what you're talking about. Yes. But again, big spoiler here. Um, he keeps seeing shit and he doesn't understand why he keeps seeing a little girl and he keeps hearing voices and all that other shit. Now they explain it at the end, which I thought was genius that basically he was drugged with a hallucinogen. And so he's questioning not only everything he's finding out, but he's questioning his own mind and sight and trying to figure out why the fuck am I seeing this shit? And I thought that was an incredible dichotomy to add to the story. Yeah, dude, it was really, really neat. And even with all that, he still like maintained his like pretty much focus and, and, you know, like, I I don't know. It was, it was interesting. It was, was, this was fun movie. Yeah. It was his kind of unwavering, like, uh, will focus trajectory. I don't, I don't know. know of of sticking to the facts, like without doubt. Even though he's seeing all this shit and hearing all this shit, he's still like, no, no, that's not real. This is not real. That shit's fake. That's bullshit. The medium's bullshit. And he disproved the medium like right off the bat. And I was like, oh fuck, great. What are they gonna do for the rest of the movie? Then we find out. Yeah, no, that was interesting. It was right at the beginning. You're like, well, what are we watching now? But no, it it did definitely like build. It was cool. Right, it was great. I don't want to say what twist because that's really a big spoiler. But um, Mike, let me just ask this. I asked my mom this, and I got to remember to ask her on her podcast here. We're going to do that later. But uh, did you have you ever read any of these Agatha Christie books? I have not, man. I, my literary um. Uh, expertise is very low i i've only read you know a handful of books in my entire life yeah well you'll read more websites than books and i understand um i like to quote unquote read books when i'm driving around in the car especially on long trips i like my audio books uh it's again i talked about this with my mom it was like a fucking audible commercial last weekend i mean not last weekend last podcast <laughs> even though we're not sponsored by audible but um I kind of want to go and revisit these books because I haven't read them either. And I think that probably helps because I heard some people talking in the theater when I was leaving after seeing this film that this is nothing like the book, which it's not trying to be. It's just inspired by Agatha Christie, you know? So it kind of makes me want to go and read the books specifically probably through the, you know, audiobooks because that's the easiest way for me to read because typically when i start reading i start falling asleep because it's when i'm in bed and that's not really where you should be doing it but it's just kind of where i can't have the time to you know yeah yeah speaking of books and like movies my mom always told me if i if i want to read a book of uh like a movie it's like that's fine go watch the movie first then read the book because almost a hundred percent of the time the book is going to be better than the movie. Um, just cause they, they, they have, there's no time limit and, and they, they can spend more time on development of characters and various things. And yeah, she, she's a hundred percent right on the, on some of the, some of the mo- uh, books that I've read that, that are movies. Like, um, like one of my favorite book series is the uh, millennium series. The, the girl with the dragon tattoo. 
And, uh, yeah, the, the movie just was okay. <clears throat> just was okay. Um, but the, there's like a, um, Swedish version of it that was a little bit better. But then the book, man, the book is so amazing. But like, I get, I get it. You you just can't cram all this stuff in there, you know? Like there's, there's too many things that happen and like you couldn't show everything. So it's like, I guess, you know, uh, what would be a good one? Did you ever read the J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, you know, like the Lord of the Rings? Like they tried to do those ones close, but, you know, I still think they missed a lot of stuff or had to take creative license because it's just too much it's just too much to fit you know okay so let me answer a couple of those questions here in a minute um i think we did the movie on the podcast um do you remember the martian yes i think we did it for a podcast i'm not 100 percent sure but i think we did yeah i think we did and I read The Martian long before it was being made into a movie. I didn't even hear about it being made into a movie. And I loved the novel. It was so good. That's uh, Andrew Weir, fantastic writer. And he's um, an astrophysicist or an engineer or something. He's something in the sciences. And so everything he presents in the book is real. It's like legit. That's really what those things are and what they would have to be and how long it would take and all that stuff. And the book is so much better than the movie. And I think I remember when we were recording the podcast, I kept saying that. I was like, God, the book was just so much better. So I like your mom's idea of watching the movie and then reading the book. But on that one, I had already read the book because I had been told it was so good. And it was. I couldn't put it down. It was so good. Yeah, yeah. You told me to read that one. I haven't had a chance, man. But I have read some some books here and there, but it's like, it just takes a lot of time, and, and that's something I really don't have anymore. Um, well, especially being a breeder. Yeah, tr- trying to what? I tried to read a couple books, Matt. I got them in May, um, and I just returned them. I it took me it took me like four months to read two books that were short. Uh dude, I understand. That's why I do it in audiobook, man. I don't want to keep pushing Audible, but honestly, I will drive. You know, especially when football's in season. You know, that's at least two and a half to three hours in the car every week. That's several chapters in an audiobook, And I just crank through them. You know, I like my podcast too, though. So that's the hard part. I got to pick between a book and a podcast. A long road trip is even better. I went to California. I tried to take vacation. It didn't really work out. But that was a, um, you know, six and a half, seven, eight hour drive. Depends if you're talking about when I went there versus coming back. But I was alone. No one rode with me. I just drove myself and met the rest of the family. And uh, I listened to audiobooks the entire time. I finished two. Oh, man, dude. You finished two books. That's great. Granted, they weren't like big books. Like there's some, especially my history books. I love the history books. The history books will be like 25 hours and stuff. But anyways, okay, oh, when we get back on topic, I wanted to flip-flop it because you asked about Lord of the Rings. I have not read the Lord of the Rings series, but I did read The Hobbit because when we were kids, I don't know if you remember, we had a bunch of friends that were reading The Hobbit and passing it around, and I read it during that. I don't remember. It was like me and you know Tommy Hill, and there was Wyatt and Ivan, and all of us kind of read The Hobbit. We talked about it and stuff, but never Lord of the Rings. And then The Hobbit... Um, Peter Jackson took the book of the Hobbit, which is not a big book. It's a fairly small book and added to it to make three fucking movies out of the book. It would have been a strong one movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think some of that was <clears throat> motivated by making sure there was return on the, uh, expense of the movies. True. True. So anyways, I just had to add that because sometimes it does go the other way. And, you know, he embellished and made up a lot of shit that probably Tolkien's probably like, oh, you motherfucker, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, uh, there's there's all kinds of uh, d- different uh, books where people like, like almost, it was like almost inspired by. You're like, I read that book. This movie is nothing like that book, like, except for the title. I don't know why sometimes they do that. Because it seems like they had to purchase the the rights to be able to even make the movie, and then they just kind of not really use it. Very strange. Right. right. 
So, okay, speaking of titles, Mike, here's one to put us back on topic. I got an interesting one. Do you think the title A Haunting in Venice is keeping people away from it? Because it kind of insinuates that it's a horror movie, not a murder mystery. It's more scary. And you know the people that love, not to make it sound bad, because I live in Prescott and this is a Prescott-based podcast, but you know the people that love mystery movies are retirees, the older people. Do you think this title of this film which is not the title of the novel, is kind of keeping people away? Uh, y- yes, that could be a factor, Matt, because a lot of the haunting movies tend to be, you know, extreme, uh, much more horror-oriented than this one. But uh, I don't know. If you use, like, the name of the actual Agatha Christie book, it was called Halloween Party. I feel like that's kind of similar n- nameology you people would be like well i don't know we'll go watch this horror movie because it says halloween party i don't know yeah but if they know the novel though but again from what i've heard and what the people in the theater were saying is that this is nothing like the halloween novel it has elements of it but it is not like it at all they changed a lot yeah so this is probably more one of those ones as inspired by where just very little, like some of the ideas are taken or just expunged, but I, I don't know. Just, yeah. 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 No, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. I was just curious because, I mean, you know, my theater wasn't very full, but again, I, I tend to go like day one and there was probably 15 people in there, which is pretty good for a Thursday late show in Prescott because people just aren't going to the theaters, which we talk about all the time too. But <clears throat> Mike, I mean... Honestly, what do you think? Do you think people should go see this in the theaters or should they just wait? Um, I had a great time in the theaters. I think some of the uh, sound uh, design w- is is pretty neat. So if you didn't have like a surround sound stuff, like I, I think that the theater enhanced that. Um, I guess other than that, I mean, you could see it on another media or, you know, at home streaming or whatever, but... I do still like, I enjoy the uh, going to the movie theater and getting completely immersed and turning off the cell phone and just being there, you know? And so I feel like we have so many distractions in our lives now. It's like watching at, t- at home at, uh, isn't really as engaging because there's things beeping and timers and various things, kids, kids, you know, whatever, all kinds of things. And th- and that thing that's in your hand right now as we're talking. Y- yeah, yeah. Um, all kinds of stuff like that. Like that's his smartphone, people. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. I was just pointing it out. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, nothing else was in my hand. It was just the smartphone. Yep. Nope. Nope. Your other hand is completely empty. The pants are on. So we're good. But no, I I, I don't. I'm guilty of this. I will watch a show that's kind of okay, kind of boring, and I will be on my phone and it's not good. And being in the theater takes that away. And I personally love going to the theater. You know, we've talked about it many, many times. But I think this is for me, seeing in the theater is probably a maybe like you could probably enjoy it still at home. But I think being in the theater makes it a lot better because of the sound design and the creepy children and all that other stuff. Because it legit sounds like it's behind you when you're in the theater. You know, if you don't have a good surround sound system, it's not going to sound like that at home. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like it's 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 so much harder to disconnect now for everybody. And like a movie theater is still one place where if you will, uh, you know turn your phone to silent or do not disturb that's awesome and then you can just relax like i almost want theaters to start like having little cell phone bags have you know like uh, i've heard about this with like uh some comedians and stuff they're like you go into the venue and they're like here's your cell phone but you put it in a bag so you can't use it during the show so you just focus on the show They've been doing that at some of the smaller concerts as well. I have not experienced it personally, but I have heard about it. And then um, one of my favorite bands who I just saw actually very recently, uh, last weekend, I think it was last weekend, um, was Ghost. They did a 
t- two night show in LA. It was the last of the U S tour. They're going to continue the same tour down in, in uh, Mexico, I think in South America and stuff. But, um, they said specifically, and they warned everyone. If you pull your cell phone out at the shows in LA, they are kicking you out. No questions asked. They were kicking you out. Now, after the fact, we all know what they were doing. They were literally filming the shows to turn them into either a movie or a uh, Blu-ray or something like that. And they did some special stuff only at those two shows that they did not do for any other shows. And they did not want it spoiled for when they go to sell the Blu-rays and DVDs and whatever. And I love that. I think that's great. I I like... I'm a love hate when it comes to concerts and cell phones. I like being able to take pictures of the band I love and I love taking videos of them, but the motherfuckers that sit there and hold the phone the entire time drive me insane. Get a 30 second clip. Hell record one whole song, but then put the shit in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I'm, I'm definitely of mixed, uh, you know, like I, I don't, I always want to get like a, a picture or two, of you know just be like oh you know i was at that show um but other than that i I really just try and leave it in the pocket and uh just kind of enjoy the show be in the fucking moment man be in the moment because that moment is never going to happen again that's it the start the finish over you know and maynard lead singer of tools huge about that you know but I just, you know, it's nice to have photos and it's nice to be like, I remember this. It's memories because, you know, back in the day, Mike, we had our ticket subs and now we can't even do that shit. You know, it's uh, all cell phones now. Oh, yeah. No, no. I, I, I the ticket stubs are, are like a thing of a past pretty much. Like every once in a while you can get a paper ticket, but like most of the time you can't. And then, um, yeah, like, I mean, we, I, I have, you know, we used to sneak in a camera uh to shows back when you couldn't even bring cameras so we got like you know what is it 16 shots what we're on a roll like 16 or 22 24 24 so it was 24 on average sometimes 36 yeah so we did we did 24 pictures and we didn't even know if they were any good and most of the time they were shit that's one thing i want to do is get those negatives from you and scan them all in i think that would be fucking awesome I don't even know if you have them anymore, though. I, I still have quite a few, yeah. Dude, we need to do that. We need to organize that where we just scan all the negatives in and make them digital because that would be really cool. Because I was thinking, again, continuing off topic, um, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do in my office at work. I'm thinking of like printing out just like, yeah, they're not the greatest pictures, but like concert pictures and just putting them on the wall in my office at work. I think that'd be pretty cool. Okay. Um. Yeah. That would be cool. But anyways, Mike, okay, to get back on topic, we got way off topic there, but it is towards the end of the podcast, which typically is what we leave for getting off topic. But uh, A Haunting in Venice, uh, let's just recap. Story was good. Acting was good. Cinematography was good. This is a fantastic film. I really enjoyed myself. I think you enjoyed yourself. I know you like the horror elements. I liked the drama and kind of the mystery elements. So, Mike, I guess the real question is, uh, how many reels are you going with today? Uh, I'm going to do a four out of five. I really uh, had a good time with this movie. Well, Mike, uh, that makes two of us. I I really enjoyed A Haunting in Venice, and I also give it four out of five reels. Very cool, dude. Very cool. So coming up uh, this week, it is our last film or not this week, it's next week's podcast, but we're going to see the film this week. Uh, it's our last one before the Harvest Horror Fest, Mike, and I think it's a banger. You see the pun there? Yes. What are we going to talk about next week, Mike? Oh, we are talking about Expendables 4. These these Woo! guys are invincible. There's just another movie that they're going to be just shooting stuff and blowing up things and it's going to be great all right mike i have to confess something what's that i have not seen expendables three what i've seen one and two but i have not seen three so i will be watching three before i go to the movies this week It's going to be a long night, man, but I'll do it. I will do it because I want to know the story. I want to keep it going. But yeah, 
Expendables, for those of you who want to watch them, I found out where they're at streaming. For how long, I don't know because it says they're expiring soon. Maybe at the end of the month, they might be going somewhere else. But Mike, Expendables 1, 2, and 3 is currently streaming on Netflix. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think 3 was mildly entertaining, uh, if I remember correctly. So, I mean, they're just kind of, they're almost like throwback movies to when we were like growing up like 80s just Stallone like just Rambo like Van Damme like he's even in I think the first one or the second one Van Damme he's in the first and the second one I think yeah no like it's I feel like it's just kind of throwback movies for that like and it's just got ridiculous amount of like stars in it and I'm still not sure why Jason Statham's in them all but you know He's fun. Like, it's just an interesting uh, group of, like, old uh, um, action stars, dude. I don't know. It's just funny. What I tell people is ignore the story, ignore the cinematography, ignore the acting. If you're there for the action, you're going to have a good time because that's what it is. It's all the action stars you can ever freaking imagine doing insane, incredible action movie, explodey, shoot 'em up scenes for a good solid hour and a half, if not two hours. Yeah, like I think they're on their way to like Fast and the Furious. The the only issue is like Stallone's like seventy four or whatever. Like I don't know how long he's gonna be. No, dude. What? He's like 77. 77. Dude, I don't know how long he's going to be able to do this. And like Dolph Lundgren's, he looks like he's had some plastic surgery. Like it's it's been a long time, man. Well, I will say this. I have not read or seen anything, but I've heard a couple people talking about this on like the news and things. Um, Expendables 4 supposedly doesn't have Sylvester Stallone in it for much. And that's basically because he's 77 years old and you can only do so many explodey things at that age. You know, <laughs> I mean, he's old. He's just old. It'd be like Ma Hinshaw doing this shit. She can't do it. She's old. Gotcha. Gotcha. I mean, maybe, maybe Stallone's going to live like uh, Clint Eastwood and he's going to be making movies until he's like, you know, 95. Uh, you know, he's going to be directing Rocky part 900. You know, like like on, uh, what was it? Uh, was that Back to the Future when they went to the future and it was like Rocky, like eighty seven? No, I, that was Jaws. I oh think. yeah, I don't no, think it there was, was Jaws. The yeah, yeah. Well, they are actually kind of making like tons of those types of movies. But anyway, Jason Statham's in one of those, The Meg yeah. Two. Yeah. And we we missed out that on that one, and I think we made the right choice on not seeing that one in the theaters. But that's my opinion. Yeah, I don't think we missed much. I, I will, of course, watch it at some point and just be like, what is this? But anyway. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. When it's on a streaming service, I'm going to watch it, and I'm just going to be like, okay, this is garbage, but I watched it. So, Mike, all right. Well, I think that is it for me and the podcast. Mike, what else do you have to add? Because if you don't have anything, let's go ahead and get you to bed, sir. We got to tuck you in. Night-night time. (laughs) All right. I think it is night-night time. Uh, I don't have anything to add. Um, I'm looking forward to watching Expendables just because it is just ridiculous action. So we'll just go see that. And then, um, yeah. So uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, Make sure to follow us on uh, Instagram, uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, Meta, formerly known as Facebook. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll catch you on the next pod. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now go out and catch a movie. Welcome, everyone. This is Ma Hinshaw Loses Her Cookies. Episode 30, A Haunting in Venice. 
<laughs> oh, there is my handsome son, Matt. Hello, Matt. How are you? Cookie. No, that's Cookie Monster. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I am present and accounted for. What more do you want from me, mother? I've already been on the radio once today. I've been on the podcast once today. Now I'm doing another one. What more do you want? My throat is chapped. <laughs> Well, I don't care, really. <laughs> well, fine, you... then. Go ahead, talk. This is your podcast, A Haunting of Venice, star directed by Kenneth Branagh, starring Sir Kenneth Branagh, Michelle Yeoh, Jamie Dornan, Tina Fey, uh, and Jude Hill, just because I know you want to talk about him. Oh, okay. and Kelly Riley. I, you know, I didn't even talk about Kelly, Kelly Riley on my podcast, damn it. She now, did such it... a good job. Wasn't she the mother? Yes. And she's she the uh, crazy oh, lady from Yellowstone. Oh, that's her. Oh, yes. awesome. She and was. She is very... British in real life. No, she's British? Yes. Well, she was British in the movie, too. I'm, you know, yeah, sort of. Not a real strong accent, but a little bit. Mm hmm. And then there's Hercule Perrault. Well, anyhow, okay. Played by British Kenneth, whatever his name is, and I don't know the last name. I forgot. Sir Kenneth Branagh. He's also the director. He's a sir. Wow. He is knighted. <gasps> oh my heavens! I better not say anything bad about him. <laughs> and okay, I won't. nobody listens anyway, so it's fine. Oh, well, thank you ever so much for making us feel very good. No. I'm just mm, being but... honest, Ma. You know, you don't give away your cookies, so no one wants to hear your cookies. I do give them away, but the only people around here are my grandkids, because my husband won't eat my cookies. He's afraid it'll kill him. Wow, that's well, foul. Anyhow, that's foul, great... mother. <laughs> I thought this was a really great movie. And I really love the beginning where they show Venice and everything. Oh, it's so pretty, you know. And uh, he has, I don't know, he has this outdoor patio thing that's way up high, which I'll bet there isn't really one there. But anyway, it was really beautiful. You never really, I never thought about why Venice is sinking, but it is. There's a lot of water. <laughs> it has been for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, and it hasn't sunk yet, so there is hope. And anyway, but you know, I um the beginning was great. I thought it was fun that she was asking him to come and help and uh that they had been friends and you know it's a typical Agatha Christie movie. And uh, Agatha Christie fans really love it, I believe. But uh, it was a little bit slow to get going. And if you're looking for a lot of gore, no, don't look for a lot of gore. Because there wasn't a lot of gore. Okay? What are you saying? You were expecting a lot of gore, Mother? This is well, a yeah. murder mystery. It's not a horror fest. Well, I thought maybe there would be a couple of, like, bleeding uh, uh, kills, but there was only one. And, you know, so you can well, take I your... Think, I think getting an arm through the chest is pretty good. Well, it is. That one was good, you know, but, but well, I'm not... D dare I talk about the other two murders? No, I better not. You Let's do whatever not. you want. It's Ma Henshaw loses her cookies, yeah, so yeah. your cookies are lost. Yeah. So do what you want. Not gonna say. I'm not gonna say. I will not give it away. But anyway, and I, I absolutely loved Michelle. She made a really creepy medium. That was really cool. And but the house was. I mean, they could have found a darker house, but I don't think so. And I wonder why they moved into that place in the first place. Holy crap, that was dark and creepy. I was 
oh, no, no, let's find somewhere else, you know. Really narrow hallways and dark and whoa. And the basement, well, she didn't think they had a basement, but yes, I did. And that was very interesting. You'll have to go to the movie and see that. Okay. There. What did you think, Matt? So you thought the basement was an interesting part of the film? Yeah, where it showed the skeletons and stuff where the children had drowned it. I thought that was interesting. Oh, dear God, spoilers. Well, you asked. What children's <laughs> drowned? Well, I don't know when they drowned it. It might have been a way long time ago, but there were bones down there. You saw that. Or were you asleep? No, I was paying attention to the film, but I'm just trying to lead you because this is your podcast and you need to talk about the film and how much you enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it. I enjoyed it quite a bit, but it was a wee slow in the middle and I did have one snooze, as I told everyone on the radio, too. I had one snooze. Sorry. It, Why do you it, keep it, falling asleep during the movies, Mom? You need to be it, wide awake. You're not a very good reviewer. Siskel and five. Eber didn't fall asleep. They just died. Shush. Shush. Oh, they just died. Yeah, great. Well, anyhow, no, I just, it was kind of, um, he didn't start really collecting clues real early. But, I mean, it was interesting um how the medium was doing her work and supposedly there you know ghost and maybe i don't believe it but anyhow uh that was very good tina fey i thought she was really very good cute i she was you know she wasn't her typical funny person but she was good in the acting and uh it just finally when they finally get to the close and add up to who done it i was happy okay and i won't say anything about that either hercule come on you know i kept saying hurry up hurry up what's the clue where's another clue because that's what you do when you watch you know the agatha's movies at least i do do you well it's not her movie mom it was Kenneth Branagh's movie, but it's inspired by her books. Well, yes. All I, of them are. The character that he portrays is clearly from her books, but clearly the stories have, are not 100% hers. Oh, they're not. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. Okay. Oh, and I do. I have to brag about Jude because he is uh, the son of the family there. And he does a beautiful job because after I saw the movie, I looked up Jude Hill and that fellow has a very strong accent and he didn't have any hardly at all in that movie. He was very good, I felt. So he is not the child of the family that owns the palazzo. He is the child of the doctor. Right. So you said he was well, the child of the family. They say everything. My goodness. They want to go see the movie and get a few tea tales. What else? Well, Mom, you you've know? already spoiled the snot out of it compared to me. Oh, well, I'm terribly sorry. Boo hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, you did a really good job, I thought. And uh, it, I was just surprised when i heard they interviewed him and he has a really strong i don't know if it's british or uh irish or something. it's a mix anyway he is very cute so did you hate this movie matt why would i hate it mom you know what i gave it you listened to me earlier on the radio i think well, this is the best out of kenneth Branagh's trilogy of agatha christie inspired films I don't agree. I like the second one better. But you are this, high. Oh, I am not high. And Jude Hill is from Ireland. Aha. Uh -huh. There. It was an Irish accent then. All right. Anyway. Why do you think the death on the Nile is better than a haunting in Venice? Tell me why. I don't know. I felt like the um 
you go along and and you think oh, I don't know with their move with his movies you try and think of who done it you know and you think oh well this person probably did it might have done it and then you go well maybe not no maybe this person has done or do you know and I didn't have that kind of feeling in this movie much you know uh well but, okay uh, death it, on the nile the murderer in that film is the predictable one i will just say that i will not say who well, it is but he was true. the predictable one true. it was that's so true. that makes it a good movie that it was predictable no i like no it. that makes it a terrible mystery movie oh hush up <laughs> no i thought in it was the first good. okay death on the nile is two hours and seven minutes yeah. A haunting in Venice is an hour and 43. Take out 15 minutes for ad, so it's closer to an hour and a half. Death on the mm-hmm. Nile is closer to an hour and 50 minutes. That's and you're true. saying, I mean, two hours, yeah, an hour and 50 minutes. Yeah, sorry. I'm <laughs> trying to do the math in my head. Get it. Death okay. on the Nile spends the first hour not even on the ship where the murders and everything take place. Mm-hmm. And you're saying that's better. They don't even get the story rolling into an hour into it. And it's a better I film. I like Egyptology and I thought it was cool going down the Nile. And hey, that's my choice. I have a right. But this was very good also. Okay. But I would never buy a house like that. Ever. Pardon me. Creepy. But anyway, it was it was creepy. Yes. So if you like creepy, but not horribly creepy, go for it. Right? It's not creepy at all. It's a murder mystery. Well, they can be creepy. You slept way too much. I did not. Rude. You're rude. It, it, was, it was very good. I recommend our one fan go see it. There you go. Okay? And that's super fan Mr. Eric Talent. It sure is. <laughs> go, Eric, go. <laughs> have you sent him a shirt yet? No, I don't have a shirt. You need to get that shirt made for him, Mom. He wants it. No, no, I'm not good at getting shirts made. I don't do that stuff. Okay, okay, Ma. How many cookies do you give a hunting in Venice? Well, I gave it four. But it's because... not your favorite of the three. Then no. what do you give Death on the Nile? Five? Four and a half, maybe. Oh, Jesus. Well, now we're splitting hairs. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, but I like all three because I, I think the Agatha Christie movies, they're, they're fun. It's fun. You know, it's kind of like uh, playing Clue in a way. You know? Well, Mom, where do you think Clue is inspired from? Oh, you're kidding. The movie? The film and the game and all that is inspired by Agatha Christie novels, of course. Oh, of course. Well, okay. You know what, Ma? What? This is why you're not allowed to drink before the podcast. God. Uh, look, I had one margarita at about... 12 30 and i think it's probably not affecting my behaviors i am normally weird well then okay i was gonna say then what is your excuse <laughs> one margarita and how many tequila shots seven no no they didn't even give, give me an extra it's really sad but that's okay i think you should write a letter only a dollar ninety nine, so I mean I'm all over that. Yeah. So there probably wasn't any booze in the margarita, in other words. Yeah, there is there was, yeah. I could taste it. Mm-hmm. Whatever. It well, I can. I've had enough tequila to know that there's tequila in there. Not a whole lot, but you know. hmm So Okay, Ma, so why don't you tell your listener, super fan, Mr. <laughs> Eric Talent, what movie you're gonna talk about next week? Oh, good gosh almighty. I, it's, I, it's number four of, (laughs) I keep wanting to say equalizer. Oh, shoot. We already did equalizer three. That was a couple weeks ago. uh, I don't know. 
I can't think of the word. What is the expendables. it? Expendables. Expendables. Now I have to go watch an expendable movie just because of that. <laughs> well, I mean, Ma, it's your boy, Sylvester Stallone. We all know how much you love him. Uh, yeah, because he's an art aficionado. And he's very old. He's almost as old as my husband. Actually, he's one year younger. Mm-hmm. So what's your excuse? Why aren't you doing super action films like this? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> it doesn't work with a walker. It's somehow I, I try and lift weights once in a while, but no, it doesn't work out real well. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, dear. then what about, uh, Dolph Lundgren? I don't know. <laughs> I know Dolph, but I can't picture him right now. Um, and, uh, Let's see, who else is that? Oh, the one fellow that I'm sure I know, but I don't remember his name either. You tell everyone what's what his one name? fellow that you don't remember his name? Uh, 50 mm, Cent? No. Keep Megan going. Megan Fox? No, not Megan Fox. Andy Garcia? No, keep, go back the other way. Randy was, Kocher? No, that one guy, you, you. What's his name? Oh, shit. Darren Knopp? Are you going down the list instead of up the list? Who's the second? Cody Mackey? No. Who's that? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. You Jason Statham. That's it. I. Why can I not remember his name? Jason Statham. Well, why can't you remember my birthday? Oh, well, that's... Oh, I do, and you don't want me to go through the torturous labor and birth that I had. So don't even go there. I remember your birthday. There. Okay. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, Ma, well, anything else you want to add no. about your best friend, Hercule Perot? He did very well, um, and he's not French, but he... That's a pretty good job. You know, I had four years of French. And there are some times when I said, Ugh, but that's okay. And uh, I would definitely recommend going to this movie and spending a lot of money on popcorn and a Coke. So what's your excuse for never going to Paris then? Uh, <laughs> I've never gone. Well, Anywhere out of the United States. Wait, I did go to Mexico once, but anyway, nope. I don't well, know. Did, did you just expect like the French people to start magically immigrating to the U.S.? Why did you learn French? Well, because my mother spoke five or six languages, and one of them was French, and I liked French. It was well, and a lot of artists were French, you know, Toulouse Lautrec and other folks. So I decided to take French. Not that I was that good at it. I had four years of it. Two in high school and two in college. But, you know, anyway. No, I don't. That's why I'm trying to figure out what your excuse is for not being able to speak five or six languages like your mother. Because I'm not as smart as she is. <laughs> and I used to hate it when they would speak uh, what was it, German or something, when I was a little kid and I didn't know what they were talking about. And that's true. They didn't want me to know what they were talking about. Anyway, yep. Well, that's my information. Bonjour. And, uh, you know, I can't think. What is it? Have a good night. Well, anyhow. <laughs> well, you bet. you better think about how to say good night in French. Because I will take us out then, unless you got anything else you want to say. I will say au revoir, mes amis. Well, um, can you wait for me to take us out, or do you want to? No, I want to wait for you to take us out. Because well, then why are you jumping the gun, you old bat? Or you'll take me out. I don't. <laughs> okay. Oh lord, that's a hell of a drive, and I I've already done it down and back in one day. That was no. There. Okay. Never mind. Shh. 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 <laughs> okay what is what seriously have you gotten into marijuana no is that I what this never, is no i never ever 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 will 
Mom, like, are they, you doing the marijuana cigarettes? Do we need to have not, the talk? No, no, I, no. I do not believe in that stuff. I only raise in you. onions and tomatoes and maybe squash if they get going and grow. Anyway, okay. But the, mar- the marijuana believes in you. Nope. It's <laughs> so weird. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for another riveting episode of Ma Hinshaw Loses Her Cookies, number 30, A Haunting in Venice. If you want to hear me talk more about it instead of my mother's ramblings, you can go to the podcast that you just ended. But, uh, you know, Mike and I rambled quite a bit today, too, so I I, I don't know what to tell you people. This is just just what we do, I guess. Anyways, thank you again, everyone, for listening. We will chat at you next week when we discuss Expendables number four and why Sly Stallone still is walking without a cane. (laughs) Au revoir.